I like dirty, slutty sex as much as the next woman. <laughs> but I also like adoration and worshiping and pillow talk and sensual talk. Hello, honey, and welcome to Honey Do Me Podcast. I'm Cass. And I'm Emma, and we're just two gals looking for a good lay. Aren't we all? (laughs) But when it comes to sex, we're just as lost as you and have no idea what we're doing. Luckily, we will stop at nothing to get the answers we need. Cue our expert guests. We're ready to overshare and ask all the embarrassing questions so you don't have to. By the end of every episode, you will be dripping in actionable steps and ready to take on the damn world. Or at least take it from behind. (laughs) (laughs) So tell us, honey. How how do you do you? you? Today is a very special day Mm -hmm. for everyone in the world. Mm -hmm. I was going to say America, but we're we're global, baby. We're worldwide. (laughs) We're in 140-something countries. Mm -hmm. And did you know that there's only 190-something countries? Yeah. I thought there was like hundreds. I thought there were thousands. So when I saw that we were in, I'm speaking. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, I thought it was a low number until I realized... I guess this one's my sweatshirt now. ...that you're going to keep that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Should we start over? No. <laughs> I'm wearing a new a new itty-bitty piece of merch. Yeah. A sweatshirt. That's a little tease, but I just sneezed into it. Um, but I will say it caught my sneeze beautifully. It's super comfy. Cunty? <laughs> it's super cunty. Comfy. <laughs> and I love it. You know what my next new favorite word is? Hmm. Twat. <laughs> <laughs> Cunt is intense. Cunt is intense. You know intense. what I mean? That's like when you've got some passion behind it. It's my sub for bitch, which I've talked about before. Yeah. So it's like, it is when you're angry. You're not like, oh, cheeky cunt. Yeah, you cheeky little cunt. I don't say that, but twat is hilarious. Twat is kind of funny. Because that's more like asshole. Yeah, it's yeah. more of like a that thing. Yeah. Twat. Twat, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm really happy today. I'm yeah. very excited for today. Yeah, we didn't actually say why today is a special day. Oh, yeah. It's because Susan Bratton is back on Suze the podcast. Suze is back. Woo! Yeah, we're very excited. We could not be happier to have just this bright, shining, glamorous star back oh on our God. podcast. You know that Susan is just a gift. If you haven't listened to our first episode with Susan, Let's Get Horny, mm-hmm. um, it is everything you never knew you needed Uh because we learned things in that episode that I did not know were earth side. We're earth side. (laughs) Don't say earth side. (laughs) We're earth side. (laughs) Fuck. And I'm sure you're going to have that same experience today. I'm sure. I'm (laughs) sure. I'm sure you're going to have that same experience today because we're talking about dirty talk. Dirty talk. And who better? Who fucking better to talk about dirty talk? Than the cock worship queen herself. Yes. It's bananas you will walk away with a script yes which is what we've always wanted we want a script and we also want the tools so Mm -hmm. it's you know you're gonna get a chance to ad lib and you're gonna have some very clear things to Mm -hmm. say and if by chance you want to record this and use her voice as your hypnotic (laughs) meditation meditation hypnotic sexual meditation you should because i you'll be right alongside us all right well i don't think we have to say anything else nope we'll see you on the other side see you on the other side Mm -hmm. The holidays are coming early <laughs> this year to all my ho ho hoes and bros because Manscaped just launched their new products, including their ultra premium body wash and a two in one shampoo and conditioner. The body wash is infused with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. And the two in one shampoo and conditioner works to strengthen your hair and condition your scalp so that the only flakes in your hair are from the snow. Blessed be. Blessed be. My partner loves both of them and smells so good. Mm-hmm. And And if you're looking to clean up your jingle balls or your (laughs) pants present, you got to snag the OG Lawnmower 4.0 Pube Trimmer. It's skin safe, waterproof, all that good stuff. And if it's the mistletoe in your nose that you're worried about, (laughs) their Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer is going to be your new holiday bestie. Yeah, I won't be found under that mistletoe. Not this year. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DOOMEE, D-E-W-M-E, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com when you use code DOOMEE, D-E-W-M-E. 
Experience premium grooming with Manscaped. Well, I am Susan Bratton, and I am a, I am a recurring guest on the <laughs> Honey Do Me podcast, mm-hmm. and very excited. It's so funny because I was listening to you did the in, you recorded the intro to our episode after we did the episode last mm-hmm. time, uh-huh. and we were like all over with all kinds of crazy conversations, and it was the sweetest introduction that you oh. gave me, and I really it was really one of the nicest introductions that anybody's ever given me on a oh. podcast. Oh. We just had so much fun that day. We were kind of off the hook yeah. and um to be honest I was, a little, I, explained... I was a little drunk so <laughs> that also helped with that it <laughs> happens uh-huh. I'm drinking a tangerine topo chico today Ooh, um, but what I had explained was that I'm I'm a, I'm a sex expert who runs a publishing company about passionate lovemaking techniques most people who are sex experts are fixing your sexual problems i'm kind of the plus up gal what i do is i teach you how to have really hot sex how to transform having sex into making love and what i like to do is i like to teach people what i would call heart connected conscious lovemaking techniques and that it, and and so when you reached out to me i get you know to come back on the show which i was it was so weird how i was just thinking about you and in you popped to my inbox i guess we were longing for <laughs> mm-hmm. each other we were absolutely Susan. we were <laughs> and i sent you a list of things that i would wanted to talk to you about And one of them was Dirty Talk, which is the one you picked for this episode, which is Mm -hmm. great. Um, Because a lot of people think about, I don't even like the word Dirty Talk. I mean, I think that that makes it sound like it's going to be like, hey, you little slut, come and (laughs) suck my dick, you know, like that kind of thing. It does have like a little bit of like a musky connotation. Dirty connotation. Yeah, yeah. It Mm -hmm. does. And porny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do is I like to essentially be the antidote to porn that I don't want people to think that porn is the way you should have sex. Porn Mm -hmm. is what is made for men to masturbate to. And now women are using it too. But the problem is that people begin to think that that's what sex is like. Mm -hmm. And I like dirty, slutty sex as much as the next woman. (laughs) But I also like adoration and worshiping, and pillow talk, and sensual talk, and things like that. I remember in the last episode we did, I did a little bit of cock worship conversation. Yes, yes you do. We remember. that was really fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like pussy praise and cock worship. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that, that, that part of what I wanted to talk about with Dirty Talk today was that it's not just dirty, that as a matter of fact, I have a little ebook that I've written called Dirty Talk. That, and I didn't want to call it that. But mm-hmm. if I called it sensual talk or pillow talk or pussy praise or mm-hmm. cock worship, mm-hmm. you know, people just think about it as dirty talk. So I mm-hmm. like to be as literal as possible. Right. Yeah. And um, I'm giving that away to everybody who listens to your show at dirtytalkbook.com. So it's there oh, for you. you. It'll be a recap of everything. So you can get it for free at that oh, URL, Dirty God. Talk Book. See, this is why we love Susan. <laughs> You're just amazing to our listeners. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Plus, it totally matches the colors of your new logo. I love. So it's so matchy matchy with Honey Do Me. It's <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're so excited. And one of the things about Dirty Talk that I want to cover is how there are diff- there are three different types of lovers. And if you know your lover's type, you can dial in the dirty talk even better. And then I wanted to talk about the difference between when you're in your masculine versus your feminine and how we are all becoming more switchy. And, you know, women are finding their masculine, they're finding their dominance, they're, you know, they're, they're coming into their sexual power as they gain more confidence. They're, they're moving from being receivers to givers. And there are differences between what kind of dirty talk you want to experience when you're in the masculine versus in the feminine. Mm-hmm. And there are many men who are beginning, beginning to explore their feminine side and appreciating things like cock worship and adoration. And they don't always want to or need it to be this kind of dirty, porny type of conversation. 
conversation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I have a lot of examples of dirty talk that love I want to give examples. today. Jakes, <laughs> get out of my head. We're so excited for the examples. So you said, though, that there's three different types of personality. Like, what are lovers. those? Lovers, yes. Yeah, it's really interesting. I actually got this from a book called Open Mind by Dr. Donna Markova. She's a Harvard psychologist, and she interviewed thousands of people all over America. This is a U.S.-based study. And essentially what she realized is that we have three brainwave states. We have the alpha, beta, and theta brainwave states that are our, there's also delta brainwave state, but kind of generally we're in those three brainwave states. And the first one, beta, is what you, what the three of us are in, Emma, Cass, and Sue's are in right now as you're listening to us talk to you. We're in beta, which is the awake and aware and action-minded And then there's the alpha state, which is kind of your subconscious state. And that's your, you know, that can be your dream state, the state of processing, the state of introspection, your quietude, um, the times when you're integrating new things that you learn. That's your, your secondary state. And then you have your theta brainwave state. And I've always explained to people that sex is an orgasm is very similar to meditation because you're in your theta brainwave state when you're orgasming, when you're connected with your lover, when the world falls away and it's the two of you and the interplay between you is what's in enhancing and, and, and accelerating your arousal together. And that theta brainwave state is your sex state. It's the state of surrender to pleasure and it's the state of orgasm and it's the state of meditation. And in the theta state, some people are naturally more visual. Some people are naturally more auditory and some people are more naturally kinesthetic. So what Donna, what Dr. Donna Markova discovered is that we have these three states and we're visual, auditory, or kinesthetic in each one. And we tend to not, we tend to have a dominant state in each brainwave state. And the dominant state for your lovemaking in your theta state, it it really depends on who you are. For me personally, I'm kinesthetic. When I am making love, lights bother me. I like it dark. Mm -hmm. Uh, The music can't be too loud. The temperature has to be nice. I tend to close my eyes when I'm coming. You know, a lot of people who are visual in their theta state, they want to look in your eyes when they come. They want to see you. They want to see you in lingerie or they want to look at your muscly body or what have you. The visual is very important to them. And for others, and these are the people for whom dirty talk while making love is like a crazy good experience. That's my husband, for example, Sir Tim. He is an auditory in his theta state. What turns him, what I can get him so hot and turned on if I tell him a dirty story while I'm making love to him. So recently I've been working on my cowgirl game. I've been, (laughs) oh my God, I'm just like this fluid fuck mistress. I get on top of him and I just like, I'm doing pompoir to him. I'm milking his cock with my pussy. I'm sliding around. I'm doing short strokes and long strokes. I'm making him wait till I plunge back down on him. And the whole time I'm doing that, I'm telling him the dirtiest, dirtiest story. And it could be something like, what's that knock at the door? Oh, it's the cheerleaders. I forgot I invited him over. (gasps) Well, I'm fucking you right now, but I guess they're going to have to hang on a second and let me tell them to come in. Come on in, girls. Doors open. (sighs) Clomp, 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 clomp. Oh, look, honey. There's six cheerleaders and none of them are wearing panties under those short little skirts. (gasps) And they all have on cupless bras because I told them how good you are at breast massage and they're going to line up and they want you to take turns playing with their titties. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. So casual. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That is. <laughs> that, yes. I'm obsessed. 
obsessed. I'm Where obsessed, do you find Suze. the words? Like, how do you know yeah. what to say? And how did you get to cheerleaders? Like, is that your fantasy? Like, something you thought of? Is no, that I like just cheerleaders? Made that shit up. <laughs> I just made. I literally just made that shit up. And Fuck. what's great about people? It's it's actually really easy to to talk dirty to people who are auditory in their theta state because they're the least picky about what you say because I can just say random stuff I can just say whatever I want I just can string dirty words together and concepts and visuals and I can just tell them a story that goes from it just popcorns around to whatever I want to talk about and oh there's there's their trainer. Oh God, he's so fucking hot. It makes me so turned on. Ooh, let's invite him in for a threesome. You know, I want an MFM so bad. Why don't you guys spit roast me? You know, whatever. Like I just, (laughs) you know, whatever. Like you say, (laughs) the things you say (laughs) casually, easy. (laughs) Oh my God. Do you ever like get tired of talking, but like you're in the middle of the story, you know, like my worry with starting dirty talk is that I'll be too tired to finish it. So I'll want to stop and like just feel in my body. Yes, because for me, talking dirty during sex actually takes me out of Mm -hmm. my turn on because I am kinesthetic. So what I like is just stroke my clit, play with my breasts, make out with me, make love, go down on me. I like the feelings, the sensations, and I get lost in the physical sensations because I'm kinesthetic. And that's what that means. Mm -hmm. Feeling rather than talking, seeing, or or thinking. Mm -hmm. But I do that dirty talk for my husband as a gift to him because it really turns him on. And so in those moments, I mean, our lovemaking dates can sometimes go on for an hour or two. And so I'm in no hurry and I don't do that the entire time. It's just one of the vignettes within a greater lovemaking date. And it's a moment when I'm giving to him. And in the giving to him, I'm actually giving to myself because I'm getting better and better and better over time at being a good dirty talker. So that I think you have to remember that sometimes you are just there to be the person who's giving. I've done, I've been in a foursome with three other people where my girlfriend was with two people. And um, I, I kind of think it's hard when one woman is with two men and she should have both of them at the same time and trying to have two guys in a foursome with two other women focused on both women it's best if one woman's getting all the attention at a time in that kind of construct and so I really like those those foursomes where I'm just giving the blow by blow oh Tammy, you look so beautiful. You should see how sexy your body is. You look so gorgeous just having those two men devouring you and loving on you. And, you know, I just, I give them compliments. It's like a running string of compliments Mm -hmm. where they're hearing what I'm seeing and how beautiful it is. And that's turning them all on more. So you're Look like, at that gorgeous cock sliding in and out of your pussy. It's so beautiful to see. That kind of stuff, kind which of is a part of the whole notion of adoration and worship, which is what I really think dirty talk can be when you do it well. Mm-hmm. I had a vision of you with like one of those mics to your shirt and you're just the announcer, like announcing what's happening in the force. <laughs> and so Suze comes in to be the hype man and watch everyone else. Yeah. Like the literal blow. By yeah. the way. <laughs> I would be obsessed with that. Oh my God. So when you are going into this more, you know, adoration talk, how do you get started? Because I think a lot of like my frame of reference for dirty talk has really just come from porn. And so it's all right. Very slut based, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you start to move into that other type of dirty talk? Yeah. Um, I think there are, there's that slut based type of talk. There's the kind of talk that supports the feelings you want to feel during sex, like, let's just say you are 
a gender non-binary person or you're someone who doesn't want to be talked to you're you, you maybe you're in a woman's body but you don't want to be talked to like a woman you want to be talked to like a man or a boy or you're doing role reversal or you're being the more dominant one you're practicing your dominant persona or your submissive persona or you're playing the kind of daddy and little girl role which many people really love that so you could be the person who is the little girl and still be dirty talking your daddy oh daddy you're so sexy i love to i love to get my hands lubed up and slide them all over your biceps it turns me on so much i love your big veiny cock it's throbbing i see it winking at me (laughs) god (laughs) it reminds me of bridesmaids and she's like this you know like these are the balls but of elbows anyway (laughs) Are there, so if you don't want to be like adorned for your genitals too, are there good talks for like other parts of your body? Like, yes. So there's, remember when I was talking in the beginning about the difference between what the masculine and the feminine really like, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't really matter. I support all gender expression, but there are certain things that lend themselves to being more masculine or more feminine. Mm -hmm. And the masculine generally, what he wants or what they want is to be appreciated for doing a great job. They want respect and they want to know that they're giving you incredible pleasure. So when you're moving it from just genital adoration, whatever that may be, and I do want to talk more about genital adoration, especially Mm -hmm. because I already did cock worship Mm -hmm. on the last episode we did together um, about how to be hornier. Mm -hmm. I want to do some pussy worship as well. Yes, please. Um, Let's put a park. Let's put a pin in that. Pin in that. Uh Uh Right. Not literally, though. <laughs> Please don't pin my pussy. Don't pin my pussy. <laughs> we'll put a in that pussy. one. Don't yeah. pin the parking lot, my pussy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the so the what the masculine wants is to know he's doing a good job, and a lot of times, what that is is just letting him know how much pleasure he's generating. How good he's making you feel. God, your hands on me feel so good. The way you're stroking me is incredible. You're melting my pussy with your touch. I love it when you stick your tongue down my throat. I love it when you touch the tip of my tongue with the tip of your tongue. It's like another clit and it turns me on so much. You know, whatever. That kind of stuff. (laughs) And then... Um, so that's what he wants is he wants to make sure he's doing a good job and Mm -hmm. a great job. Mm -hmm. So whatever you can say that lets him know he's doing a great job is very valuable. Okay. Okay. Then for the feminine, what they want is more encouragement and appreciation, which is very similar to knowing you're doing a good job. But what women want a lot is encouragement. That whole come for me, baby. Come on, come harder. Oh, you're going to come so hard as soon as I touch your clit like this. There you go. Right? That or baby, you look so beautiful in this light. I love that sexy lingerie you wore for me. Your legs and that that muscle, you're getting muscle along the side of your thighs now from all those stairs you've been running. Shit, your ass looks beautiful to me. God, you are such a sweet woman. I'm so happy to be making love to you. What I did right there was I did a combination. Women like a toggle. Mm -hmm. toggling is a technique that I teach in many different ways there's the toggling of the masculine feminine there's the toggling of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system to increase orgasmic intensity you don't just drive orgasm you you give sensation and then you pull back a little and then give a little more and pull back a little and then give a little more and pull back a little that toggle Toggling actually helps a woman come even harder. And the what works for the feminine is when you balance the combination of adoration and just straight up sexy 
idolizing. Mm -hmm. You know, you you love her ass and you love her turkey meatloaf. If you <laughs> only, and you don't talk about the turkey meatloaf during sex, but if all you ever do is talk about how you're going to tap that ass or mm -hmm. her titties are all so look so good or whatever. Then she feels objectified mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to feel objectified. So the way you do that is you don't stop telling her you want to tap her ass and how great her titties <laughs> look in every top she wears. What you want to do is make sure you're also telling her what a wonderful mother she is and how she's never had a single accident in the car and she's such a great driver and you're so <laughs> proud of the promotion she got at work. And when you heard her talk on the phone on that Zoom call, she was bomb ass. You know, that's <laughs> the kind of thing you want to do is you want to respect her mind, her way in the world, um, the things she shows up for in your life together, as well as how rocking her body is. And when you talk about what you like about her body, you want to give very specific examples because if you just say her ass, then she's going to be like, oh, come on. You just like everybody's ass. You're just an ass man. And because we women, we negate mm -hmm. what our, what, what, when we get a compliment, we're all like, no, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, well, <laughs> exactly. not me personally. Personally, I'm like, can you give me about like a dozen <laughs> compliments right now, please? Because I want them all. Um, one of the games that I teach couples to play is something called tell me three things you love about me. I love that game and already. It's a game. You like it? <laughs> I haven't ever played it, but I like the sound of it. <laughs> I like the sound of it too. And it's um, because we women really appreciate encouragement and adoration in equal measure. Um, this is a game that I've played with Sir Tim for 30 years. This month is 30 years with wow, Sir Tim. My we've God. been playing it for 30 years. And he doesn't really ask for it. I do. Mm -hmm. I say to him, baby, tell me three things you love about me. Whenever I'm feeling a little insecure, or I just need to hear some loving conversation. I have unlimited asks. And when he tells me three things he loves about me, he tries to never repeat something he's already told me. So he's always thinking about different things that he loves about me. And that's a very good practice. He's great at it after 30 years. He can come <laughs> up with amazing things, ex specific examples of things that I've done recently that he's loved about me, something I wore, whatever I did, something I did in bed. It doesn't really matter. And that's really great practice for honing your dirty talk skills because you can do a dirty one and two clean ones. And then you get that toggling, you get that balance, you get the adoration, you get the dirty thing, and it works really well. So what women want is that balance between the two and they want specifics like what about my ass exactly mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. like? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, what I like about, go ahead. I was going to say, I love the idea of the toggle. Like that is so... Yeah pinpointed on exactly what I want is mm -hmm. like, yes, I want filthy, filthy, very endearing and tell me yes. that I am your sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Spank me and hold me. And hold me. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Cause, and being so specific because it does start to mm -hmm. feel generic. If it's like, how many times can you say I like your ass? You know, it's like mm -hmm. before it's just repetitive. So yes, being right. very specific. I like the freckle on your ass because then that can be yeah. sweet and hot yeah yes <laughs> i assume <laughs> yes so i love those tips that mm -hmm. would work for me it takes a lot of vulnerability to express your love mm -hmm. and yet it's the vulnerability that is the sweet and creamy core of who we are that is exactly who we want to show up with uh with our best friends and our lovers mm -hmm. that's that is the sweetness of love um I want to give you another technique that I really like that is also in the dirty talk arena, if you will. It's something called sharing frames. And it helps. It's another way to become good at talking dirty in the bedroom because you actually do this after you've made love. And you can do it anytime after. And essentially what you do is you think about a frame as a snapshot of a moment when the two of you were making love and it was something that was like really specially, especially delicious for you in that moment. And the way that you do it is you use sensation language. Okay. So um, the, last, the last time we made love and I was on my hands and knees and you were behind me and you were fucking me doggy style. And we had the mirror in front of us 
and I was watching you fucking me and I was looking at how you were rubbing your hands all up and down my back and holding my waist and there was this moment when you were stroking inside my pussy and I was like oh god I'll never ever be able to let you go because this fucking is exquisite oh it's just (laughs) making me it's just getting the spot like nobody's ever gotten the spot before and it was just so hot and it was at that moment when I knew that I wanted you in my life for the rest of my life so you could do something like that, where it's mm-hmm. the visual, mm-hmm. the feeling, the location, the position, the emotion that you had. Mm-hmm. And then that person will know that that particular thing was super erotic to you. And it makes them feel really good as well. So sharing favorite frames is a great way to experience the hot sex you had with your lover through their eyes instead of just your eyes. When they tell you what was particularly hot for them, you're like, whoa, that's so funny. I was kind of wondering if it was feeling good. I'm Mm -hmm. really glad you told me that because I wasn't sure you even liked that position. And you're like, oh, no. (laughs) I like that. I like it. (laughs) (laughs) And so sharing frames, I think, is a really good um, sex practice for Mm -hmm. lovers. Sounds like such a good tool. Yeah, Yeah. dirty talk. You're reinforcing, like, how good your sex life is. And then maybe it could also be used as a tool to, like, and tell me if this is the wrong time to use it. But, like, when you were doing this, like, I really liked it. But next time we could even do this. Like, if you wanted to change something about that scene, like, you loved it, but maybe you wanted to change it a little bit? I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't do the constructive okay. resets during the frames. Okay. Because okay. you... You always want to, those I would keep, I would carve, I'd carve that out separately. Um, And the other thing is that it's better to say those things in the moment. So Mm. one of the techniques that I have is called the sexual soulmate pact, P-A-C-T. I don't think we talked about that on the last episode. I think we talked about the soulmate embrace on the last episode. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the sexual soulmate pact, it comes from my sexual soulmate's book. And it's it's essentially how to give feedback in the moment without feeling like you're going to hurt your partner's feelings. Okay. And having them happily receive the feedback and adjust immediately. Because here's the thing. We are... We are primates. We are great apes. We are monkeys, basically. We are part of the monkey family. And we are only as good as how much sugar we've eaten, how much sleep we've gotten, where we are in our hormonal cycle, what's going on with our emotional body, how hungry, what's our, you know, what's our blood sugar like, et cetera, et cetera. All those things really impact, especially in the feminine, with our 28 day lunar cycle um, where the masculine is a little more steady state. He's kind of like horny all the time. And we are sometimes I, oh, I have this, I know that um, your listeners can't see this, but I'm holding up this little kitty cat, this full sized plush little tabby cat, calico kitty cat. And I have this ridiculous little lion's mane Halloween kitty cat costume on my little plush kitty cat doll. Because one of the things I like to say is that sometimes we're a lioness, you know, and we're like, ravish me. And we're all pick me up and throw me down and rip my clothes off and stick your dick in me right now, you know? (laughs) And other other times we're like, oh, I'm a little kitty and I just need you to pet me and I need you to hold me and don't stroke against the fur, stroke with the fur, long strokes from my little soft head all the way down to my little twitchy tail. And (laughs) We can move from that from moment to moment to moment to moment. We could go from little kitty cat to pawing lioness within a single date. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we want firm, hard strokes. And sometimes we want the lightest touch along the edges of our labia. And it's putting us into this exquisite orgasm 
orgasmic sensation. And that changes from day to day to day, from second to second to second, which is why guys are always like, okay, I, I'm doing exactly what I did the last time we had sex and it's not working. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's because it'll never work. Mm-hmm. You have to be in the moment and feel her and get the biofeedback from her to know what she wants. And even better, if you're the kind of guy, and, and, and usually it's more that the woman's afraid to hurt the masculine ego, because he's going to be like, well, I know, or he's going to contract, or he's going to be all like, <laughs> and you don't want that. So you just kind of put up with whatever you're getting. Right. And it's so much better when he's like, tell me anything you need, baby. All I want to do is give you incredible pleasure. And if you want it hard, I want to give it to you hard. If you want it soft, I want to give it to you soft. And then when you start to communicate to him, and he's just like, how's this feel now? Got it, baby. Is this better? How do you like it now? Do you want me to go lighter still? And when, when he is not, when his world is not rocked by your requests and instead he's like, wow, that feedback is making me the hero. I really want more of it. When he's hungry for your feedback and he's an instant adjuster and there's no egoic connection to what he's done and you start telling him what you need and then you start trusting yourself and you start trusting what your body's telling you and you start trusting your intuition and you listen to her and you're, it's like, don't shoot the messenger. I have no control over this body I live in. I don't know what the hell she wants, but I'm going to listen to her and I'm going to tell you. And when you're good at taking that from me and you make me feel like you actually are happy when I give you feedback, then you start becoming incredible in bed together. And that's the sexual soulmate pact. It's an agreement between lovers that you can't, that that you'll let go of your ego and that you want the feedback and that when you get the feedback, you're going to thank your lover and adjust and move on. And I think that really, really helps people um, accelerate their lovemaking skills so they get really good in bed together because yeah. every moment is always different. I'll, I'll say to my husband, tonight, can we have an expanded orgasm date? And then um, I want to, well, I don't know, I, I just got this new vibrating butt plug. And, um, and my husband will be like, okay, that sounds great. And then I'll get to the date and I'll be like, I don't do that at all. Here's what I want to do, you know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. I want to practice my cowgirl again on you, but this time I want to try reverse cowgirl, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he's really, really, really used to me, just me spinning on a dime because I listen to what I really want in every moment. And then he's more calm because he knows I'm really getting what I want, not what I asked for this morning, but what I want right the fuck now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so I think the Sexual Soulmate Pact is really good. You can download that at sexualsoulmatepact.com and you can give it to your partner. You can both read it. You can discuss it. You can have the agreement to do that. And it takes a little practice to get comfortable, just like learning how to be a sexy talker does. Mm -hmm. But the more you do it, the better you get. And the better you get, the more delicious it is. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense to talk about corrections you know like what you're saying makes so much sense and it feels it's weird that it's so hard sometimes for people to like give constructive feedback or take constructive feedback because like it really you just build more confidence you know that you're both getting what you want and that makes so much sense well in the way that you're describing it feels like a really sexy way to do it too it's like it Mm -hmm. makes it a part of the dirty talk without it being like yeah I love it I Mm -hmm. feel like it's perfect yes absolutely um, I want to take a pin out of the pussy praise. Yes. So can okay. we go to that too as I take out my hoops like I'm getting yeah, ready for something? I know, really. I mean, geez, uh, you're uh, preparing I'm for preparing. this pussy praise. Yeah, I really am. So one of the techniques, um, Tim and I have had um, an expanded orgasm practice for going on 20 years. And basically it's a clitoral stroking technique. And we teach it. It's one of our programs. It's called Expand Her Orgasm Tonight. And it is a five-stroke technique, a clitoral stroke. You might have heard of it called orgasmic meditation. You might have heard of one taste. You might have heard of deliberate orgasm. You might have heard of um, more university or more house, the technique. You might have heard of it called extended massive orgasm. There's been a lot of names for 
this particular thing. And it's kind of like a yoga practice or a martial arts. It's a form. It has five strokes. There's three opening strokes, a bread and butter stroke, and a closing stroke. The stroking practice lasts 15 minutes to an hour, just depending on how comfortable the giver and receiver are. He, the, the giver, he or she, uh, any gender, uh, strokes the clitoris, and it's a super light stroke. Um, you know how you take, uh, when you get an, uh, if you get an, uh, an eyelash on your mm-hmm. eyeball and you're trying to get it off and you use that tip of your finger mm-hmm. to get that eyelash off your eyeball? It's that light. And this stroke is a super delicate stroke under the hood on not just the tip of the clip, but a bit of the shaft. And it's this real soft rhythmic stroking that goes under the skin. You're not stroking the the skin of the clit. You're stroking the meat of the clit, the clit in there. And over time, you get really good at finding the spot where when you deliver that super light stroking sensation to the clit, a woman can go into an orgasm that instead of it being like you take her up, ah, she has the orgasm and she's done. You can take her into that moment of climax. This is why it's called an expanded orgasm. You can take it into that moment of climax and stretch that moment out like time is taffy. And you can hold her there and she can come and come and come and come because she's getting a stroke that's not essentially blowing out her clit, blowing out her nervous system. Mm -hmm. It's just so light that it helps her stay in that climactic peak. And then you can stack those peaks and they can become more intense and go longer and longer with practice. So you can basically come her for an hour, but you toggle, you do something called peaking, which gives her nervous system a little break, and then you take her up again. And this is a really good practice for women to learn how to stay in sensation, not run away from sensation, feel sensation, uh, be able to feel the lightest of sensation. And one of the things that you learn when you do the expanded orgasm practice is you learn something called abnosing, which is noticing. And abnosing or noticing is a type of dirty talk. And what you're really doing is you're, as you're beginning the three opening strokes of this expanded five stroke practice is you're telling your lover what you see. Well, your pussy looks beautiful to me today. It's shaved so perfectly. I love how the mons is so smooth and I can see everything in your pussy. It's a beautiful color. And as I'm stroking and kneading your mons and your outer labia and seeing it fill with blood and get really engorged, God, it's so plump and juicy. I can tell we've been having really great sex lately because you're so responsive. Oh yeah, now I feel the shaft of your clit. It's nice and hard and your clit's poking out from under the hood. Oh, I'm going to rub that glistening hood. Let me put a little more oil on and just stroke that with the lightest of strokes. Now I'm going to stroke down your outer labia. Do you feel that? I can see you reaching for my finger. I can tell how much you love and want that touch. This is an example. <laughs> I could go on. <laughs> yeah. you, do you guys need to take a break? Do you need to- <laughs> Just need my water. Thank you. You should see Emma and Cass right now. So we're looking at each other and it is hilarious. They literally, they literally just both, their heads went back and they rolled back and they both like mopped their brow. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So I feel like you should release some sort of hypnotic dirty talk mm-hmm. like audio 
because not only do I get I just did I yeah, yeah do that's podcast. true because <laughs> not only do I get turned on by everything you say it like relaxes me mm-hmm, I'm yeah. very very in that theta state I'm in a theta state <laughs> I have to go home yes um, well that's that's the abnosing it is meant to relax you by letting you know that everything's working you're doing a great job your pussy knows what to do and she's responding beautifully. So you're 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 letting go of your performance anxiety. Will I be able to come? Will it feel good? Will I like the way he touches me or she touches me? Mm-hmm. And you're seeing that you're doing a good job and that your body knows exactly what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It feels like a, a lightness. So mm-hmm. that I hope in the moment that would transfer because I think that is what it is. The heaviness is that performance anxiety of like, I got to get myself there. We all want to do a good job. Yeah. And I feel like our societal standards have set very specific things for what a good job means. Like you Mm -hmm. need to come in this particular way. You need to do it in this particular amount of time. Like there's so many shoulds Mm -hmm. that like it's fucking impossible. (laughs) It's fucking impossible. Fucking impossible. So where um, and how do we take that course on the expanded orgasm Mm -hmm. oh the expanded orgasm course Mm -hmm. um well first of all i'll give it to you so you have it um and it's a series it's essentially it takes you through the entire date we call them a due date deliberate orgasm do the due date you're getting done you're having a due date that's kind of the original the original creators were um victor and Susie barranco from the 1970s and now everyone who teaches it teaches a, a variation of it the the, the variation that I teach is the heart connected lovers who want to have a 20, 30, 40 year expanded orgasm practice together, where they lay down together once or twice a week and she gets her pussy stroked and has a bunch of orgasms. It's a way for women to really completely receive without any need to give, which is very cathartic for women. It's also Mm. really great for men because they want to give that level of pleasure and they want you to experience it from them. So, or or from givers generally, and you get it at expandherorgasmtonight.com. And there are three free pleasure reports that you can download. You don't even have to purchase it. You can just start with the free stuff. One is that toggling technique called the power of peaking that intensifies orgasms. And one is what is expanded orgasm? How does it compare to a regular orgasm, an extended orgasm, a multiple orgasm? How is it the same or different? So you kind of get to know what you're going for. And then the third book in that program is touching for rapture, which is a very interesting thing. I teach a lot of touch techniques, just like I teach passionate lovemaking techniques, the more techniques you have, the more variety you can create and arousal and turn on and excitement and variety are as important as creating security and safety and and adoration and comfort and lowering performance anxiety. You've got, that's another toggle. You have to have the safety and the variety to keep wanting sex with your partner. If it's too safe, it's boring. If it's too just variety, it's too edgy. You need the safety. Mm -hmm. And um, touching for rapture is one of those techniques that teaches you how to really touch that clit not only the clit, but the lover in a way that makes them come and have that expanded kind of um, orgasm. And so that's at expandherorgasmtonight.com. And that was created by my mentor, Dr. Patty Taylor, who's taught me so much about expanded orgasm, so much about what it's like to come so much and so hard that you're afraid that you might not come back from it. I mean, I'm an orgasmonaut, as I think we discussed in the last episode, Mm -hmm. I call myself an orgasmonaut, because I have come so many ways, and, and, and so hard and so long, and she's been there the whole time for me, I call her up and I'm like, I'm scared, she's like, it's okay let go. You'll be, you'll be able to, it might take you a day or two, but you'll be able to come back from it. You know? (laughs) Holy shit. Wow. Well, we will be running to that link. Yes. Thank you. Very much. Yes. Of course. Do we want to tease a little bit about like, you know, other things that we can talk about with you in the future and kind of where this all could go with Suze? (laughs) Sure. You tease away. Let's hear you tease. 
Oh, <laughs> please no. <laughs> please, dear God, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I will let you <laughs> tell us a little bit more about, you know, kind of your specialties and where we can really like dive in with you. You've teased a few already, so we're very excited. Well, let's see. When you emailed me, and it was so funny because I was literally thinking about you the same day you emailed me. And um, because we had so much fun on the on the how to be more horny Mm -hmm. episode. Mm -hmm. Um, And I said, Okay, well, I I thought, what do I want to talk to you about? What do you what do I think would be really fun? What's on my mind? What am I into? What kinds of things? And the very first thing that came up for me was fucking mastery. Just like, how do you really how do you do intercourse well? How, what what are the ins and outs of penis and <laughs> vagina sex? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yes. Because I have really studied intercourse and orgasms from intercourse and stamina. And um, one of the things I'm learning right now is pompoir, the use of your vaginal musculature Mm -hmm. so that there's less friction and more pleasure because friction is not the only way to get off. It's just one of the ways. So fucking mastery was interesting. I I talked a bit about the 20 kinds of male and female orgasms. That's all free. And that's on my website, by the way, at personallifemedia.com. If you're like, okay, I want to do all 20 or I want to do whatever (laughs) that's there. And that's free. Mm -hmm. The orgasmic cross training and the four kinds of vibrators that all women should own. We taught, I've mentioned that earlier. I've just, Mm -hmm. one day I was just like, huh, there's four kinds of vibrator or they're not even vibrators. There's four kinds of sex toys that women should really own because the more that you go back and forth between these four types of stimulation, the more orgasmic you become even with a partner without the toys Mm -hmm. oh wow and then hard-ons I love hard-ons guys want them girls want them everybody wants them and I am believe it or not an expert in penis enlargement I actually there are a lot of guys who are like you know could I be bigger is it is it possible what would I have to do and I have written a book called the pump guide and over 40,000 men have downloaded it and I have helped thousands and thousands of men enlarge their penis safely so that's interesting that is interesting very interesting (laughs) and mfm threesomes so many people talk about threesomes as two women and a guy but getting fucked by two guys is an incredible experience for a woman and there are some really great things you can do and it's not all about dp either that's just a pornography thing just some really fun things and there are a lot of men that are really turned on by the idea of being with a woman and another straight guy they don't have to even be on you know bi or anything to still want to double team a woman and that's super hot. Mm -hmm. Um, And then sexual soulmates, which is kind of my sweet thing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We talked about that. That's um, the six essentials for heart-connected lovemaking. If you want to turn your mate or even a date into someone who feels like a sexual soulmate, where you've got that depth of connection, where you can't tell where their turn on starts and yours ends, where you're just in this swirl of pleasure together. And, you know, two hours later, you're like, can I get a drink of water? (laughs) You're just like so far gone into the deep hole of pleasure together. How do you make that happen? There's some preparation and there's some things you do during lovemaking that really set the scene for that abandon and that surrender and not even, not ever having anything enter your mind that isn't just pure pleasure together. So that's a fun one too. And you yeah. guys picked Dirty Talk today. Yes, today we <laughs> did. And I could not be happier yes, with that my decision. God. And we're so excited <laughs> for future Cass, Emma, and Sue's. Yes. Episodes. I'm yes. so glad that you enjoy having me. I love oh, being with you. We, we love, love having you. Absolutely we absolutely love having you. Our <laughs> intro is just the start of the things that we say about you on yes. a daily basis. Yeah. You come up in our conversations <laughs> quite often quite in often. the best way. Yes. Is there anything else in terms of dirty talk that you feel like maybe we didn't get into enough or any other tools or tips that you want to make sure our listeners are connected with? 
Um, there's probably a few more things that I've forgotten, but you can download dirtytalkbook.com. You can download Perfect. the book. It's free as a PDF, and so you don't have to pay for the printed version on Amazon. And um, that way, if I've forgotten anything that might be right for you, it's in there. Mm-hmm. And in there are a lot of verbatims. I tell you in each little chapter, and it's short. I like short books. Just mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I want something same. I can read when I get up or before I go to bed or whatever on exactly. lunch break or whatever. And um, I give you probably like 50 or 100 phrases so that if you're not sure what to say, I give you some things and then you can personalize them. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's also, it's nice to have the, 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 the construct, but it's really nice if somebody just tells you what to say. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When you're starting out, it's so difficult. And I am saying that as me starting out, it Uh is so difficult thinking of stuff to say. And then I get stuck and then I get in my head because I'm like, oh, I really like this. I really think I'm an auditory lover. Mm. When you said that the visual was looking into somebody's eyes when you were coming, I was like, so I'm not that one. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to check that one off for me. That one's just, yeah. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Where um, was just I? having the words and like really. Oh, yes. It's down. just so, so helpful. And one question I do have that I have been wanting to ask for a very long time, and I'm sorry I left it to the end, but what are some things to call your partner? Like in bed during that sexy talk, like what are, because I feel like all I hear is daddy mm-hmm. or uh-huh. like slut. I don't know. <laughs> daddy or <laughs> slut. Uh-huh. What are some uh-huh. things to like, if you, you know, uh, my partner's name doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue. Mm-hmm. Um, so if that is the case, yeah, you just add sir in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't work sir. for me. <laughs> I love Sir Tim. I think that's a great name. But I know. It's very honoring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's a prince. He's a prince among men. So really, I like to call him Sir Tim. Mm-hmm. Um, my beloved, my lover baby, sweetie, honey, um, sexy, um, sweet ass, uh, <laughs> I like sugar, lips. <laughs> sugar lips, sugar lips, a stud, mm-hmm. um, big swinging dick. <laughs> uh, That's the one. That's it. Mm-hmm. We found it. We found it. <laughs> There's my big swinging big dick. Swing Bring that dick. Billy club over here to mommy and let me do you really well. <laughs> God. It just wouldn't come out of my mouth the same sure. way. It wouldn't have the same effect. I'll need to like take this clip from the episode and just have it so that <laughs> I can play it and I'll mouth the words. Hey, <laughs> sampling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't used to do it either. Remember, I'm 60 years old and I didn't even have my first orgasm from intercourse until I was like 45. Wow. So everything is a learned skill just because mm-hmm. you don't know it now practice makes perfect and you know the ridiculous parts when you're trying stuff and it doesn't work out i mean they're always the best parts of sex the best parts of sex are the fuck ups Mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to just put yourself out there and be ridiculous and have a good laugh because if you can't have a good laugh with your lover geez oh pete's who are you gonna have a good laugh with (laughs) so yeah stretch yourself and be silly and ridiculous and, and 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 it'll be a lot more fun That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Where can our listeners continue to connect with you after the episode, besides in all of the future episodes that we will be doing together? (laughs) I know, that's so cute. We have some dates. Yes, we do. (laughs) Um, You can find me on Instagram at my name, which is Susan Bratton, S-U-S-A-N-B-R-A-T-T-O-N. I have hundreds of videos where I get dressed up in ridiculous costumes and teach sex techniques for free at betterlover.com. And it's searchable, which is nice. So whatever you're into in the moment, you can search for it and you'll find some videos. And they are really passionate lovemaking techniques, bedroom communication skills, and sexual health and vitality, you know, techniques, which is important. Mind, body, and spirit all must be aligned. Mm -hmm. Um, And then my main website is Personal Life Media. It has the thousands of articles that I've written over the last 15 years, all indexed and searchable as well. So you can find a lot of things there. And then, of course, you can get Dirty Talk Book, Sexual Soulmate Pact, and did we mention anything else? I don't think. There might be a couple in there, but I'll make sure oh, yeah. that those Expand are all Expand her notes. orgasm yes. tonight. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Those three. Can't those forget three that one. We talked about yes. this time. Yes. 
because I love to give stuff away. You can have as much from me that's free as you want and have as, you know, it's unlimited. I've got so many free things. So I I hope your listeners enjoy as much as is right for them at the time, because the beautiful thing about sex is that your personal growth and your sexual growth are two sides of the same coin. And throughout your life, if you nurture your sexuality, which your Honey Do Me listeners are people who care about their sexuality, who are interested in sex, who want to have pleasure and connection. And it just can keep getting better your whole life long. At 60, I'm having the best sex of my life. You get better at it and more confident. And uh, so investing in yourself and your sexuality is always a benefit. Didn't we tell you? Didn't we tell you? We're so happy to have had Susan back. Thank you, Susie, so much for being with us today. I am hot. (laughs) I am (laughs) hot to trot. I'm hot. Cannot wait for all of our future episodes. To our listeners, if there is a particular topic that stood out to you in the many that Susan teased, Mm -hmm. please let us know because we'll make sure and prioritize it. We want to bring you what you want. And we know you want Susan. So we know we know we know and also yeah thank you to you guys for sticking around because sticking around we're here for you just more good stuff is gonna come your way the longer you stay with us the better we get i love when <laughs> susan says and coming and coming and i'm like i've never come more than once <laughs> so the fact that she can say it three times i'm like huh huh there's something i think i'm missing something missing there is some something i need to learn from uh-huh her. lots lots coming and coming and, and coming, coming and for coming. you. Uh-huh. Um, and if you want to go, go, go to Apple Podcasts and rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me, it means the world to us. If you leave a written review, it really just helps us grow. It helps does. Helps us get in the ear holes of all the other honeys out there who really need a little bit of do in them. A little... <laughs> You need a little do in your ear hole? I'm Sounds com- like wax. I'm coming and coming <laughs> and coming yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> if they leave a review, what emoji should we give? The unicorn? Ooh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, no, it I like it. Right. Susan is unique and special and magical. Uh-huh. I love it. So yeah. leave a unicorn if you write a review based off of this episode. Yeah, and share it with at least one other person. One other unicorn. Think. Yeah. Who's also a unicorn who mm-hmm. could also talk a little bit dirty to you. Share it with your partner, share it with your friend, share it with your boss. Your boss. <laughs> your boss. <laughs> your boss. Because you want them to say three things that they love about you. Yes. Who really, this is applicable that? to anybody. So. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Yep. Bye. Bye.